Well, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate this uh, invitation to spend a few minutes uh, with uh, some of the uh, students of the Academy. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, be with you when I was in Santiago recently to give uh, an overview of U.S. policy towards uh, Latin America. I'm very happy to uh, give you a few uh, broad uh, pointers and then we can open it up for a discussion uh, with uh, the members of the Academy and with, with students in the Academy. Uh, let me just simply start out uh, by saying that that, as you noted, I've uh, returned uh, to Georgetown University. Well, I will return in the fall after uh, a few uh, uh, days of vacation, uh, and I will go back to my work as a, as a professor of uh, international relations and political science, uh, primarily to, to, to uh, write uh, for a period of time, and then I will go back into uh, teaching later. Uh, but it was a real privilege for me to work with this administration, with the Obama administration, uh, with Secretary Clinton, to see how we could uh, work to try to strengthen the relationships between the United States and um, the countries of, of the Western Hemisphere. Remember that my responsibilities in the Department of State included Canada and all of the countries of the Western Hemisphere, including the countries of the Caribbean. So it was a fairly large portfolio. Let me just simply say that what is in the fundamental interest of the United States with regard to the Western Hemisphere today? The fundamental interest of the United States with regard to the Western Hemisphere is contributing in as best as possible uh, to the success of the countries of the Western Hemisphere. Successful countries in the Western Hemisphere are in the fundamental interest of the United States. We all have to operate from the assumption the countries uh, internationally behave in terms of their fundamental interests. And the fundamental interest for the United States at this stage in history with regard to the Western Hemisphere is to work together with countries of the Western Hemisphere as partners to see how we can build together uh, stronger and better societies. That's in the fundamental interest of the United States. Uh, as the President said, this approach uh, is one that is that also has to reflect a very different international context from contexts in the past. I, I just did a program with uh, Andres Oppenheimer, and he asked me, "Oh well, you know, hasn't the United States lost ground in uh, Latin America vis-a-vis, -vis, say, China?" And he cited a, a whole host of statistics showing that that China is in, in, importing more materials from from Latin America and its investment rates are going up in a significant way. And that's true, uh, but I don't see that this is necessarily a problem uh, from the point of view of the United States. Quite the contrary, if the countries of, of the Western Hemisphere can sell more of their own uh, uh, raw materials as well as more of their own finished goods and products to other countries in the world, this generates foreign exchange, it helps to increase living standards, uh, and it makes it much more uh, likely that uh, countries in the Western Hemisphere will also be buying uh, goods from the United States or working with the United States. But I say that there's a qualitative difference in some ways that the China example uh, illustrates, and that is that in some ways China is still operating in the world as a mercantilistic power, looking for raw materials. Um, it's not very interested in purchasing finished goods. Uh, goods with value added from the countries in the Western Hemisphere. And this is leading to some significant tensions. 60% uh, of all exports from Latin America to China come from Chile and Brazil. Chile, 20%. Brazil, 40%. But that's copper, iron ore, soybeans, and that kind of thing. Raw materials. We're in some, some ways, this is the mercantilistic world that Prevish uh, wrote about when when the whole process of import substitution industrialization began uh, in Latin America. The United States is in a very different position today. Uh, its companies, its economic influence is, is, is related to a, 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 a different impetus. It's not one in search of raw materials. It's not one that's based on a mercantilistic model. It's one that assumes the greater integration 
of the world economy and the greater integration of the world period you know in terms of communications and in terms of proximity and 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 those sorts of things based on what the world of the 21st century is the world of the 21st century is a world uh, where we're moving uh, at an accelerated pace to improve technologies, to improve uh, uh, um, greater educational levels, and so on and so forth. And the future, really, of U.S.-Latin American relations is a future that's going to be based on these new synergies that are taking place uh, in the world, uh, that are based on value chains, that are based on production chains, that are based on technology chains, and that kind of thing. You mentioned uh, the, the changing role of Brazil, uh, and Brazil is very emblematic of this. Uh, in 1950, Brazil exported coffee. That was its greatest, uh, and the United States imported coffee. Uh, it was a raw material in some ways. Uh, uh, today, uh, one of Brazil's uh, leading exports is airplanes. Uh, the United States buys 60% of those airplanes. But Brazil also buys something like 70% of the inputs into its airplanes are bought from the United States. So you have a series of value chains and production chains that are taking place. All you have to do is look at North America to see what a different world it is today after the signing of NAFTA only a few years ago. When NAFTA was signed between the United States, Canada, and Mexico, the total uh, trade uh, between uh, the United States and Mexico was $50 billion. Today it's $400 billion, but it's not just exports of materials, it's transfers of a whole host of things. 80% of all exports from Mexico to the United States are intra-firm transfers. Uh, the, in, the automobile industry in North America is no longer a Canadian automobile industry, an American automobile industry, or a Mexican automobile industry. It's a highly integrated automobile industry. And we're seeing now that the recovery of the North American automobile industry is based on these, this high level of integration. So all I'm saying is that the world has changed. The logic of, 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 of the world economy has changed. The role of the United States uh, in that world has to change as well. And let me just simply say that there are a few fundamental premises then that guide United States policy towards the Western Hemisphere. First is, of course, we have a changing world where the, where the real, the key, key uh, objective now is to secure peaceful, prosperous societies based on what I've been referring to, and that is levels of technology, investments in people, investments in education to lead countries to a different level. That benefits uh, all of us. It also helps to secure more uh, peaceful societies. That's the fundamental premise. Now that doesn't, and that leads in turn to a different way in which the United States interacts with the countries of the Western Hemisphere. It's no longer asistencialismo or assistance. Uh, it's no longer foreign aid. Uh, it's how do you develop partnerships to be able to do things together? So the, the uh, memorandums of understanding the United States signed with both Brazil and Chile are evocative of this whole new uh, paradigm. Uh, uh, with Chile, uh, it, it programs to look at, for example, uh, the evolution of glaciers. Uh, with Brazil, uh, um, agreements on space exploration, uh, and, and so on. Uh, all of, I, in both countries, commitments to education and to educational uh, improvements. Uh, now, the president did go, however, also to Salvador. And in Salvador, we're facing a different sort of challenge. Because in Salvador, uh, emblematically, uh, as in the rest of Central America, uh, the countries are facing a really serious problem of, of, of public insecurity, citizen insecurity. Uh, criminal organizations, uh, narco-trafficking organizations, and uh, this is a real, real threat to the consolidation of still weak democratic institutions, and it's a real threat to uh, the ability of these countries to attract better investment and to begin to, to grow in such a way that it can overcome some of the, the problems that we've had in the past. This leads me then to, to the reflection that the U U.S. policy can't be based on a similar approach to every country. It can't be a cookie-cutter approach to all other regions. 
The United States has to be mindful of the fact that the challenges of Chile, of Brazil, and Argentina will be different from the challenges of a Guatemala, uh, Honduras, uh, or an El Salvador, uh, and different also from the challenges of the countries in the Caribbean. In that sense, what the United States proposes now is to, to develop partnerships with different countries in, in Latin America based on the different stages of development, the different needs that the countries may face, uh, and where the United States can be an active and loyal uh, and, and effective uh, uh, partner. Uh, and I just, uh, uh, one of the, the last things that I did before leaving the, the Department of State um, um, uh, a week and a half ago was to uh, uh, attend the SICA meeting, uh, the, the Sistema de Integración Centroamericano meeting in uh, Guatemala, uh, where we were really working together with partners from all over the, the, the globe to address the issues of public insecurity uh, in uh, uh, Central America. Uh, in sum, uh, the the efforts of the United States, you know, whether it's on climate change, whether it's on public insecurity, whether it's on things like renewable energy, whether it's uh, uh, improvements in trade patterns, uh, whether it's uh, cooperation in the, in the face of natural disasters, whether it's peacekeeping, whether it's strengthening democratic institutions, and the, the many of the other sort of priorities uh, that that not only the United States has, but other countries have, uh, what we want to do is to be able to work more effectively in that regard. Uh, this also means strengthening regional institutions, such as the Organization of American States, or the Inter-American Development Bank, and other organizations to be that are able to carry uh, these responsibilities out. Uh, so that's kind of the, that's kind of a, a summary of, 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 of uh, the administration's views uh, with regard to Latin America. Uh, we are optimistic that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, I'll just simply end by saying we see a continent that is no longer as polarized as it was before. We don't see a continent, continent that's, that's riven by the, uh, the, the uh, uh, disparities between an ALBA group in other countries, uh, we're seeing a, uh, a continent where there's a, a growing element of, of consensus. We welcome the rapprochement between Venezuela and Colombia. Uh, and uh, and it, it, so the U.S. policy then is, is one that, that is encouraging a greater moderation and at the same time a greater sense of common purpose uh, among the countries of the Western uh, Hemisphere. There will be disagreements, uh, but we prefer to uh, to have strong relationships with countries uh, in the region. Uh, we will we will have disagreements, but those disagreements are understandable among uh, countries that are working together. So this is kind of the the vision that the president set forth, uh, and that I was very proud to, to be able to participate in 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 bringing to fruition. You know, now that I return to uh, my academic work, I want to go back to some of my my work in institutions, democratic institutions, uh, and more in my, in my field of, of political science. Uh, but it's been a real privilege to be able to serve this administration. And I'm happy to uh, turn over the floor to you uh, and happy to have any questions or uh, discussion that you would like to uh, follow. Thank you very much.